everyone today I am with FLW Pro and Flat Out Tungsten Pro Brandon McMillan Brandon thank you for taking your time today <laughs> always always good seeing you again good to see you we have to come to his fortress here he is actually rigging for uh, La Crosse Wisconsin for the what is it fifth or sixth uh, stop? Sixth stop sixth stop on the FL tour but let, before we get ahead of ourselves First of all, congrats on your ninth place finish at Beaver Lake. Thank you. A lake that when I called you on the phone, you said, I don't know because I've never placed a check here when I said, how <laughs> good do you think you're going to do? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it, it's just, all, the beaver's always been a thorn in my side since I started fishing it. Um, you know, but I, the more and more that I go there, I get a little bit more familiar with it. it it's a small body of water and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't change as much as as people think, um, you know. But over the years, my rookie year, I finished like 136 or something like that. Right. Last year, I just missed the check at like 60 or 62 or something like that. Um, and then this year, I had you know you the know stocks I, going up. Yeah, it, I had a great tournament. Um, mm -hmm. Even though the the lake changed every day, the water was rising. I've never fished conditions like that with the lake rising and, and insane and, and coming up that that much that fast um you know they there on saturday and sunday it was coming up like a foot every 30 minutes um i can only know. imagine yeah it was it, it was different um you know uh, other than that i really i didn't put two and two together and and you know i just kind of fished i had one one mile long stretch of uh the back of one of these creeks down <clears throat> down in the clean water section of the lake down by the dam and it had uh it had about typically you can see down 15 20 feet down at that end of the, of the lake right. which completely goes every against everything that i believe in you know the way i like to fish sure. and stuff um but i just found one one mile long section and way in the back of one of these creeks that had a bunch of dirty water runoff and and you know, it, it even the vis the visibility there was still really clean. You could see down three, right. you know, two and a half, three and a half, four foot of water. But it was just it was it was more chalky color. It, it was good, healthy, fertile water. You could tell. Gotcha. And the um, you know, the fish just seemed like they kept you know coming back there day in and day out. Um, and you, your your choice was either run. Everybody talked about running uh, upriver, and that's where the pictures of the log jams and sure all the water was flowing in, and it was you know. People were literally, literally saying, "Hey, man, you can't even go any further there. You, you didn't want to, you know, ski over the logs, so you went in a somewhat of another direction." Yeah, I mean, just, just the progression of how I've learned to fish beaver over the past three, you know, you know, three trips there. My, my rookie year on tour, I went up the river because that's where the, the biggest fish in the lake live up river. Um, it's more dirty water, it's shallow right. water. You can flip, you can crank. You know, you can do the stuff that I that I you know feel like that I'm I'm decent at. Gotcha. Um, and I finished 136. Right. And the tournament was won up there, but I I couldn't. Just went on. Right? I just well, I, you know, I I had a great practice. Thought I was going to you know bust them up pretty good, mm -hmm. and you know I wound up worst tournament of my whole you know career so wow. far, and that kind of you know put a little mental note in the back of my head that. You know, that might not be the place for me to, to be up there. <laughs> right. And every year it's one up there. I mean, last year Scott Canterbury, another yep. member of our team, yep. he won it up river. He primarily fishes up the up oh, the river. Right. Um, you know, and, and that's where the biggest fish live. But did did you cross it off your list because of the treacherous terrain? No. And and the and the mud or the it wasn't it wasn't bad. I mean it looked like some people were struggling. I know there were some catastrophic failures here and there with boats and props and all sure. kinds of stuff what did you what made your decision to lay back down and um, stay stay on the other I, end I really i mean when i see beaver come out on the schedule it's usually a survival tournament for me um you know i don't go in, go into survival a little bit more meaning meaning like like don't you don't, don't want to have a 140th place finish right right i mean if you come out of there with with 80 or above for me like that's that's it, to me, like that's that's a good tournament. Gotcha. Um, you know, like I said, I've been there three times. The first year, I, I struggled. I had a great practice. Thought I was going to win the Derby. Right. When, when you could throw an A rig, and right. I wanted to finish in 140th. Gotcha. And the, ne the the next two years, I completely just just wiped out the upriver deal from my 
from my brain and I go down to the clean water and I try to catch smallmouth and just survive it. Survive. You know, they're a little more aggressive. You know, they have to be a little bit bigger than, than you know, than right. and stuff. But they don't usually weigh as much because they're usually spawned out by the time we get there. They're they're long and lean and they right. don't weigh much. But, you know, you catch five that outweighs, you know, somebody else's one or two coming from up the river. You right. know, so it's just a simple math deal um, for me. Um, and then, you know, this year I did the same kind of thing. I went up the river first day of practice. It was muddy. You know, I had seven or eight bites, caught like a five and a four up there. Nice. And, you know, I never went back up there. Yeah. Same thing as the as last year. I just, I felt like I would rather go down and catch two pounds smallmouth than I would to gamble and, and maybe only get three bites up there that are definitely going to outweigh the right. five that I catch down the lake. Gotcha. You know, and it just, then this year, it just kind of worked out to be a perfect storm. There's not as many largemouth down the lake. But I mean, you know, they were just kind of funneling into my area. They were the good one. They were the right ones to be caught. You gotcha. know, the two and a half to four pounders that you need to. And that's all now. Two and a half, four pounders get you, e even if they're all two and a half pounders. You had said earlier that, hey, look, the, you know, 10, 10 pounds, twelve pounds. You're looking at staying in, you know, check range, sure. top twenty, sure. final day. Survival weight is seven, eight pounds just Correct. to finish in maybe like a top you know 50 or something correct sure, correct so when you just to, and i know not specifically just beaver but there are other tournaments on the are there other tournaments other venues on the schedule where you tell yourself mentally you know i know everybody wants to win every tournament you didn't get right. to where you were at right. just go on mediocre realistically you've never been to some of these places sure. and you really you, what is your mindset when you go into venues that, like, just like Beaver initially, I both survive. Are there some venues where you're like, hey, listen, I'm going there to not finish last, and there's some of them where you just go in and go, I got a shot to win this. Like, where does your mind go? Where, where does it, because you're thinking points, you're forced with cup, you want to make it, you want to get in, and that you're in a great position to do it this again this year, but where does your mind go? Like, what do you do going into these to prepare so you don't set yourself up for so much failure or you underestimate your potential so that you could knock one out of the park? You finished ninth in this one. Right, yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is my, you know, this is my third, or will be my third full season on, on tour. Right. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to win one on Okeechobee and I've made some, some top tens, you know, and stuff here. But, I mean, honestly, Beaver is the biggest thorn in my side, and if you wipe out Lake Okeechobee's, you know, track sure. record, that's my best tour finish ever. Nice. Um, so know. that's got. So that was. Hey, I'm not expecting much. Ha ha ha. Let me get out of town. Right. The lake. The lake's coming up. This could be a catastrophic failure. To all the way to ninth and sure. payday. Yeah, it was. It, points. It, <laughs> it surprised me, and and there's no doubt. And you know, I told all my buddies, and I, and I told you when we, when right. we spoke on the phone. You know, going in the final day, I said, you know, I made it this far. Like, this is a win for me. Absolutely. And I'm completely content with with zero in on Sunday. Um, Fences. It, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I was in fifth or sixth place going into the final day. And I could have went and threw, threw a shaky head around on six-pound line. And I could have caught, you know, six, seven, eight pounds worth of spotted bass. And, and probably stayed in that middle pack of the top ten. You right. know, made a couple extra grand. But... Man, you don't get many opportunities to win one of these. You things. don't, and especially, and, es yeah, and especially, especially on a lake that that <laughs> I know is is you know is just a you know a, not a place that suits Florida. Fishing, sure, you know exactly. Um, but it, it, as far as that goes, like, yeah, I went into Beaver with just the mindset of trying to survive. I fished the spinny pole, you know, nine out of the ten hours that I practiced up there every day. Just wow. trying to, to get bites, feel my way through these areas and right. stuff. Um, and then it comes down to, you know, I just kind of did what I like to do and, and I, I flipped a brush hog on a three eighths ounce sinker and I flipped a half ounce jig. Um, that was it. That was the way that I caught just about all of my fish. Um, you know, but you don't get a lot of opportunities to win. Um, and for me, it seems like the, like the times that I've been fortunate enough to win, they come not so much tournaments that I don't expect to do well. They just come at those, you know, like you have a so-so a practice right. and, 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 you know, then all of a sudden you wind up figuring something out or your spot is better than what you really anticipated it being. Sure. Um, you know, but, 
you know, there's there's a lot of tournaments like like this year. I mean, I really expected to do extremely well at the Harris Chain. You right. Know, I spent a lot of time in pre practice up there. I had a, I had one of the, probably the best practice I ever had of my whole career. Mm-hmm. You know, during the three days. Um, and the first day it went, it was I was right on track. The next day I got six bites and I lost one, and I felt lucky to catch five fish. You right. Know? So um, we can derail quick. So, sure, sure, sure. The, so you don't, the, you don't ever count your chickens before they hatch. Exactly. You know? So, so the pre, your open mind, no pre assumptions, because you did better. Sure. At Beaver with high water and mud flowing down the banks and something didn't happen. I, I'm going to get to those tournaments here in a minute. I wanted to ask you a couple more things because I'm going to sure. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go into the mind of. <laughs> I'm going to go into mind of sheer weight. The mindset of sheer weight. Florida, 25, 30 pound bags. Not every tournament, but right. they're out there. You, you go in and you weigh 8, 9, 10, 12 pounds. You make final day cuts. You got a spinning rod in your hand. You don't necessarily like that. That's generally not your style. Correct. What has been the biggest adjustment you've had to make in telling yourself, you know, I'm not going to stick six, five, six pounders in a mat all day long like I do in, in your right. backyard here. What do you, t- what do you, like, what's your thought process? Do you have to think small sometimes? Or do you decrease your line size and throw on some monofilament and still jack them? I mean, what, I mean, I know, granted, we don't go to all small fisheries Correct. throughout, you know, the rest of America, per se, but Florida is a big fish factory. What have you done? Like, how, most, there's a lot of anglers that haven't been able to pull out of this state and go anywhere north, how do you do it? Honestly, Give me a couple tips of your success. Honestly, I mean, the biggest the biggest difference, you know, for me this year is I'm not trying to fish the way, like when I leave and we go somewhere, let's like play beaver, for instance. Right. You know, I spent a day or two trying to catch them the way that you're, quote unquote supposed, supposed to, to fish <laughs> beaver lake you know okay. you go to kentucky lake in june you better be hitting the ledges you know sure that's kind of a you know a tried and true deal like you're, you know you but you know i i want to fish the way that that i enjoy fishing and that's what i've kind of leaned towards more this year um you know and and for the most part we've been able to to hit the, the you know the the different lakes that we go to kind of you know at, at a good time you know, for the way that I like to fish. Gotcha. Um, I mean, honestly, I I don't, uh, yeah, I can't, I, I don't know if I, I, out of all the, the fish that I've caught this year so far in the tournament, I don't know if I've caught many of them that weren't on a flipping stick, whether okay. it's. Just maybe fluorocarbon. Right, it's fluorocarbon, <laughs> it's, it's, it's different, it, you know, it, it's it's 16 pound, 20 pound line. Right. Um, you know, and I'm pitching a, a, a three eighths ounce, you mm-hmm. know, tungsten weight or or i'm flipping a smaller jig not a one ounce jig flipping a three eighths or half you know so maybe downsize um, but you're still you're still cr- sticking crushing and yeah being aggressive i mean you know fishing to what to you know i mean i like to flip and i like to fish shallow sure and, sure and for the most part we can we can get away with that you know eight out of ten tournaments that we go to gotcha. and that's been my biggest deal it's not really you know i know a lot of guys look at google earth and they look at like past fishing history reports and they you know they look at what the guides are posting you know what what's going on and and you know i kind of really got away from all that and just kind of did the way that i you know that that i feel like i give myself a chance to catch them you know I gotcha. I- anyway like i mean i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be you know a, a dominant factor with a spinny pole in my hand i mean i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just not um so you just went with what felt good you didn't have to change a lot. Yeah. And you're not, other than a couple tactical things. Sure. But you're going in with somewhat of the same mindset. It's just sometimes you stick a three and a half and you're happy. Sometimes in the backyard it's an eight and right. change and right. it is what, okay. Yeah, that's it. I mean, cool. it, it's it's just, you know, you have to vary, you know, you know what I mean? You vary your rods. I don't use seven eleven now, you know, <laughs> right, right. fish and beaver lake. I use a seven six and, right. and it's a little more of a it's medium right. heavy than, than a triple sure. X, you know, and <laughs> stuff like that. But you know, other than that I just I, I just fished a way that, that that really got me to to the point where I am in my career, you know, like <clears throat> you know, with working full time and stuff like this, like I'm never gonna be a great shaky head fisherman. 
I don't have the time to go fish yeah, a lake where yeah, I'm going to be, yep. where it's dominated by a shaky edge. Correct. You know, I get three days to figure out a body of water, whether I've been to it or not, and it's it's three days. I mean, you're not going to master flipping in no. three days. That's right. And you're not going to master, you know, you know what I mean? Yes. So, so it's, I, uh, no, I fully get it. That, and I, I, I guess if you've taken that mentality, I mean, like I said before, finished ninth at Beaver, you got your ninth in points this year, you got to be feeling good. Whether you expect it or didn't, that's a good, you're in a good point standing. Sure. I mean, you got two grass, we're going to talk about those grass rivers coming up. Before we go ahead though, I'm going to give me one or two sentences on each one of the previous lakes that you've been to this year. Because you initially you looked at the schedule and like, eh, I got to do this, but man, it, it didn't make you do jumping jacks out in the street, I know. So we're going to start with just a couple, like, two or three things that come to your mind. Uh, we'll start with Gunnersville. Biggest thing you learned or took away from Gunnersville. And that's kind of where I developed my philosophy for the year, was at Gunnersville. Go to Gunnersville, late, late January, early February, you better throw a red rattle trap. I did that for three days of practice. Found one little spot. I did it for a day, first day of the tournament, and I caught two bass. And one of those was in a foot of water on a swim jig. And the other one did come on a red rattle trap. But, I mean, the odds of numbers, if you're going to throw right. 10,000 cash, you're bound to catch one on whatever it is. <laughs> right. um, and I did it for half a day on day two, and knowing that it wasn't going to work. And then I said, to heck with it. And I went and picked up a swim jig and a flipping stick, and I fished a foot and a half of water, and I caught the biggest bag of the tournament. Up, you know, up up there, biggest bag of the day. So ditch that preconception, went back to your roots, and then you're fine. Sure, and that's kind of that's kind of started the whole, you know, the whole mindset of doing what just uh, just doing what doing what got you there. Right. Okay. I mean, so um, Travis. As far as Travis goes, that was <clears throat> that was to this point that was the only uh, only lake so far that I hadn't got a check in, um, and it was really one of my best first days of the tournament, um, and I. I bounced around. I fished. I fished up shallow early in the morning. I threw a square bill. Um, I caught uh, three or four keepers doing that. I flipped up a couple. And I caught my biggest fish in 45 foot of water on a football jig. Um, go figure. Go figure. Courtesy of my my travel partner and my my working my running mate Gussie. Right. Yeah. Um, he's like, if you need to catch one, come over here. And I pulled up there and it just happened to be a five and a half pounder. So got a little lucky on that. Um, <laughs> You know, and, and then I kind of did the same stuff on day two, and and I tried to, and that was that was really the the eye opening deal for me. Um, I've got a great friend on tour who's my roommate. He, you know, we we share everything together. Right. I mean, it's right. all one hundred percent. If he if I don't catch him, I hope that he that he yeah beats I know my you tail would, in, yes you know? um, yes. And I kind of did a I did a little bit of my what I wanted to do shallow cranking, doing a little bush flipping and stuff. Um, and it didn't work, and so I ran over to where he was had been catching them. So I'm like, all I need, I, I was in like 21st or something after day one. Right. If I just catch me five keepers, I'll get a check, and I'll go on back to Florida. Be and happy with right. it. Right. Okay. And, and I watched him just put on a clinic in front of me, and I'm trying to do it, um, you know, the way that he's doing it. And then he's, he's done. He's caught him. He's going on to fish on the weekend, you know. He's having a great tournament. Right. And... As he's leaving, I still can't catch him. He passes me. I take his rod out of his hand, <laughs> right, and I still can't catch him. And that's when, you know, I had a 20-some hour drive home from Texas, and I'm like, you know what, this trying to fish like somebody else isn't going to work. And, and you had 20 hours to think about right. it. Right, <laughs> and trying to fish like somebody else is fishing it not going to work for me. I don't have the time to learn how to, you know, ver visually see him on yeah. my graph vertically drop on them right like you know it just you know boat positions and keep, you know it's a whole lot of yeah. other stuff but you, you know may, you may see it and may do it someday but sure do, during a tournament you ain't got time to ditch oh, it right, uh, right. and and i wasted a lot of time doing that and you know and it and it choked i mean right. i fell from like 20th to like 80th you know i remember um, i remember that day i and, think i texted you that day sure so, and, sorry about that and and uh you know it, it was a good you know that that's some of the you know that's some of the the stuff that you have to learn the hard way. Like that was a great lesson for me to learn. You know, it, it cost me ten thousand dollars. Had I just stayed throwing a square bill down the bank, 
probably would have caught two or three keepers. I only needed like four pounds to get a just, check. Just a, yeah. And you know, I weighed in one or two fish, and it just didn't work out. Um, gotcha. You know, so that kind of opened up the the whole thing for me. And that was and that was a good first day. Kind of a you know fell off second day. Only one you missed a check. I know. Then you you're driving all the way home. You're coming south. The next venue is at Harris. And your hopes are high, you know. I remember you had said, hey, you know, this is kind of in my backyard. I know you had uh, some good days of practice. Sure. Um, how did, overall, what was Harris all about? Man, o overall, I, I don't really fish Harris a lot. Right. I mean, you know. The, it, the structure's somewhat similar to the backyard. Sure, sure, Chubby, sure. But, but you're right. I mean, you haven't been there a ton right i had only been there once just a handful of times prior to going on you know being put on the schedule and then i spent several you know days in de november december up there kind of looking around and, and getting a you know feel. feel for the lay of the land and stuff um you know and I, I i learned a lot in that tournament i feel like if it comes back around on the schedule again that i can oh, you know i can have a, a good shot at doing well good um as long as it's the same time of the year and stuff like that but my practice, I had I had an awesome practice. Um, nice. You know, I caught one almost ten there. You know, one day and you know on on a rattle trap of all things, just nice. kind of just keeping everything honest. You know, and fishing the way that I wanted to, wanted to fish. Um, yeah, I had a great chance to spend three days in a boat with my brother. Oh, yeah. um, Jared. So yep. Jared was there. You yep. know, we we got a chance. We flipped a lot. We shook a lot of fish off and, and yep. stuff like that. Like you know, it was it was just kind of a little match made in heaven there. You know. Nice. Uh, I needed a good co-angler, and you know what? What better one than than my brother to come there, and yeah. you know, so we we had a blast. Um, overall, I, I guess that was the biggest disappointment of the year today. Just maybe because the expectation was a little higher than sure. Most. I mean, you know, I think I was sitting in the top ten or some so after day one, um, you know, and I had I had an early day that day. I had to be in at three o'clock. Right. The next day I had till five o'clock, and I'm like, man, I I really. And that's when I really started figuring out how the fish were positioned, where, how they were, you know, how I needed to, to fish for them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I had burned up so many fish on day one that I, I didn't really leave myself anything else. And on the lake that I was concentrating on, right. with the no wake zones and the idle speeds and stuff, like once I put it all together, it lost, was kind of kind of some time. I lost some time trying to get back to to a different lake where I'd had some some you know bites in practice. Nice. Um, you know, and and really, I had six bites. I lost like a five or six pounder, and I caught five keepers that weighed like ten or eleven pounds. Moved to twenty first, you know, fell to twenty first. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's a great tournament. I had a dead fish, and and Andy Morgan bought me out by one ounce. Yeah, from fishing the weekend. From fishing the weekend, which um, could have turned. Sure, but. I mean, you know, I felt like I had some some. I, I felt like I had a chance. Sure, I mean, sure. Um. All in all, like it was, it was a good learning experience. Again, it's a great, you know, great tournament. Next time on the schedule, maybe you'll look at it a little differently. Sure, and sure, Welcome sure. it a little bit more. Granted, it's your, you know, it's a Florida atmosphere. It was a lake that you hadn't fished a bunch. Then you move on to Cumberland. Never been to Cumberland River, correct? Correct. In Kentucky, correct. So, biggest thing you learned from Cumberland, like, what do you take away from that fishery? Um, man, it's a, it, it's a fun place to go. It, it's got them in it. It doesn't have, you know, it, it, in the grand scheme of things for, for the lakes that, that the tour chooses to go to, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily your Toledo Bends or your Falcons. Or, right. You know, they're not the giant fish Sure, factory. sure. But that place has got some good ones. And Numbers. It, 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 I call the biggest smallmouth of my life in practice nice. up there. Probably pushing a little over six pounds. Nice. Um, Scenic. Good. Oh yeah, it, it, the it's world pretty the, and it's big. You know. It's vast. I right. Mean, it's got more shoreline cover to fish than than anything I've ever seen. Pretty um, diverse fishery. It is. It is. You can you can you can flip a jig down the bank and catch and catch a, a twelve inch spot. The next push you can come to, you can catch a four pound smallmouth, and then you can catch three pound largemouth the next flip. I mean, you know, the nice. next cast, whatever. And it 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 was neat. I'm I enjoyed it. I. Uh, you know, again, I kind of did my my own little thing. I had a bunch of fish found on beds, and I had planned on sight fishing. Um, the lake come up a few, couple, you know, six, eight inches to a foot. You know, over the last day of practice in the tournament. Right. Had a massive cold front. It knocked all the fish off. Um, 
but it put me around the areas that they wanted to spawn in a day or two. You know, 48 hours ago, there was right. there was seven or eight fish in this one pocket, so they couldn't have gone very far. Followed them out? It, yeah. I followed them out. It took me a little while to figure them out. I, I, I kind of scratched out a decent limit um, the first day, and I only had like seven or eight bites. The next day, I kind of just went back to, to more or less the same areas, but I did a lot of different, different things, and I probably caught 30, 35 keepers. Nice. Um, good time you know, moved that. moved way up in the points, moved up, nice. in the, you know, got a good check. So, you know, it was a, uh, you know, it's always a learning experience. I can only for me imagine. coming it, from here. It's, oh yeah, it's different. Is it intimidating? You you said like that's a big body of water. Is that intimidating? Going to the just new. I mean, there's only so much you can look at a Google Earth or sure. talk to your buddies about. But but you you drop in, you you ramp out. You turn on the graph, you're looking at maps, and you're just like, where do you go from here? Like, let me let me go back just a little bit. You had said, I know you had mentioned, you know, Gussie and um, our, our bud, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, sure. Co uh, Corey, Corey, correct? Mm -hmm. Who on tour that you've friended, or I know kind of anglers will run in clicks that they can trust sure. and you know, help out if you break down or what have you, room with, whatever, whatever. Um, what guys can you hang out with, share information, and guys that, that have been on tour that can break lakes down to you, to minimize something when you ramp out so you don't fish half the lake. What, sure. What are, the, what are those, what are those, who are those people? Who are the people that are your buddies but also that you can, swap not only information you told me you you know hey i can teach you the flipping things and you can teach me you know if i have to put a spin yeah, rod in my yeah hand. yeah um man i mean i think i've got a a, a a pretty pretty damn good circle that i that i run with um, a diverse circle it, it, and it, it it is a diverse circle it's um you know i, I mean I'm, I'm buddies with just about everybody out there you know no enemies is good sure yeah no <laughs> enemies is, is great um you know, and, and and fishing on tour is pretty much a big family kind of atmosphere. Sure, everybody you know says hi. They're all friendly, but but my my little circle that I have, I mean, it pretty much consists of, of the Johnston brothers, right? The um, Canadians, the Canadians, right? Gussie, Gussie, and I share everything one hundred and ten percent. Nice. Um, you know, so so that's nice. We fish two total totally different ways. Yeah, like you couldn't. Right. I mean, you couldn't pick anybody further north. No, <laughs> no, no, no. And it and it's good because he he usually finds him a spot or or seven or eight, truthfully, that you can pull up to, and in thirty to forty five minutes, an hour, you can catch you five that weigh you know eight pounds. If we're on Beaver Lake, like eight pounds yeah. is good, you know. And he's, then, a, he's a limit guy. Sure, he he's a limit You're guy. Catch him. He's a limit guy, and and you know I I fish for you know five or six bites. So gotcha. it's, it's nice, you know, I don't have to worry about fishing to catch a lemon during practice. Nice. You know, he gives me three or four spots on, on Tuesday morning, and I go over there the last day of practice, and I wheel through there, and I'll throw a jerk bait or, or whatever it is, throw a drop shot, catch one or two, kind of see what I need to be doing. And if I need, if I need a on. fish, yeah. I can pull up there and catch one. And then we pretty much do the same thing. I get two days of practice. Try to figure out if they're, you know, if I can throw a big spinner bait or cranking or flipping docks or where the fish, you sure. know, where those better largemouth might be be Bigger situated. Fish, you know, yeah. if I if I can, you know, do that, then you know our our plan comes together. Comes good. together nice. You know, and, and that's what you're describing. A lot of people may not, you know, know, understand, sure. or get it. But I mean, that's kind of how the tour anglers. I mean. There's there's packs and there's buddies and there's the friend yeah. system and that's a lot of times that's survival, it, um, and, and it's it it's more well known than most people may or may not think. No, no, I mean definitely like like uh, like I said, I, I mean you know a lot of the anglers are 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 good fishermen mm -hmm. and they've got good people that that don't you know lead them astray and. Gotcha. and you know, as far as the Johnson brothers go, we talk once or twice every day during practice. Between one, one of one of them calls me, or vice versa, and, and right. we get a little rundown. Um, it's not 
you know, quite as, as wide open as it is with Gussie and sure. I. Um, you know, but on the other hand, we, you know, I mean, if they ask me, are you catching and flipping? I tell them yes or no. Sure, and, sure. You know, and, you know, we don't, we're here to just get to make some money, survive, go on to the next one. That's no the name, of, name of the game. I mean, if somebody's going to beat you and it happens to be one of your guys in your little circle, you're pr- then you're that, proud of them. that's great. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, you I know, know you. I know you'd mention that if it, you know, hey, if I if I get stuck in fifty seventh, then I want to, you know, a couple of my guys. I hope they break that top twenty sure, of their page. Sure, sure, sure. That's, um, that's really cool. I really tell you that one of the best, one of the best, uh, you know, uh, contributors to, to my season this year is it's another one of our flat out tungsten pros is, is Jeff Spray. Yes. Um, we fish a lot alike. I mean, almost cookie cutters to each other no kidding um and and it it's good like you know again we probably we don't share everything is not laid out there on the kitchen counter sure but you know i know if i've gone you know five or six hours throwing a square bill and i can't catch him and i call spray he's like dude i've thrown it for you know for two and a half hours on and off today and they're just not biting it they're just not biting it you know cross off the list cross off the list (laughs) you know try it again, you know what I mean, the last day of practice or whatever, and, you know, and, and that's been, been the, the deal. Gussie nice. kind of keeps the limit spots, sure. you know, you know, you know, honest, and, and, and he likes to fish a little more out deep and, and find the groups of fish. Sprague and I and the Johnson brothers, like, we kind of, we're looking for those singles, you know. Gotcha. You know, one fish here around a dock, you know what I mean, one, one around a lay down, then you can go crank in between mm-hmm. that, maybe get a bite or two. Like that's kind of the way that 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 we do it. Without exact spots, more technique presentation. Sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. Or or general, you know, you're not. It, it's not like you're wait. You know, it's not a waypoint deal. It's more of a general presentation, uh, right. water depth, um, this side of the lake maybe, but not understood. Sure. 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 Yeah. I mean. I mean. Don't. Just, you're still. You're still all. Well, we got mouths to feed. We're still competing against pay. each other. Absolutely. You know, it's definitely not a team sport. Sure. You know, when you're out there, um, you know, but but there has been there have been times like when you when they somebody finds the the, the juice, you know, yeah. <laughs> the best of the best that they feel like they have. Sure. And you know that there's been times where Sprague, you know, takes me away point. I drive over there and I look at it. You know, don't make a cast, don't fish it. You know, don't don't hinder him in any any deal. Yeah. But take a look at it and see, like, okay, there's, you know, you're in you're in nine foot of water, and there's yeah. there's sycamore trees, and they're right. around the sycamore trees. And I've been fishing four foot of water, and they're all buck bushes. You know what I mean? Sure. Stuff like that that you kind of, you know, that being from Florida, we don't have bushes or stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. And you know, I kind of need to see that, like, yes. you know, a bush is a bush is a bush. Really ain't ain't the same thing no. when you leave here. So. Um, and so that, that, that's, and that's been a, good, and that's a respect thing. As like, like you said, you wouldn't. You may go hammer his stuff, but you get a general layout. Sure. And then you, you never know. He you may put him on a bull rush. Well, and, you know that you that's know, the, and, and it all comes down full here. Circle. It has to come sure. full circle. It all it all will come for you know full circle. Um, Other than so, I I I kind of I you got a unique clip. Really, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, other than um, your angler, if you will, your your uh, your compadres out on tour that you hang out with and, and, and share information with, what kind of support system do you have here that ha- makes all this happen and keeps you out <clears throat> other than, you know, Bass Addiction Gear, Cloud Tungstens? <laughs> Who are the people behind the scenes that keep you going and... Like have your back when, you know, you're not doing so well or, you know, hey, look, I, you know, you ain't going to bring on a check every, every time. Right, and right. and <clears throat> you, there's, there's times where this bill has got to be paid. I mean, listen, it, this is work. Uh, sure. Make no mistake, this is work. Who are the people that have your back and make it somewhat all possible? And really, I mean, my family. Um, I couldn't ask for a better family. I mean, you know, from my aunt and uncle, my grandparents, my wife, um, you know, my grandfather and my aunt and, and, and my wife, Bree, they flew up to Arkansas, last, you know, to go in. Um, right. They watched me weigh in. Surprised um, you a little bit? They did. They did. And, and uh, you know, I had to get back to work. So, you know, Bree, she flew up, landed 
Sunday afternoon. Left right. left Florida early Sunday morning. Flew to Arkansas. Got off the plane. Watched me way in. We got some Popeyes. We got in the truck. We started heading back to Florida. <laughs> started driving me so in. I mean, it, it you know the the family aspect of it is great. Um, you know the sponsors. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a great you know group of sponsors. Yes. Um, You're happy with like? Do you feel like like everybody talks about sponsors, but when they have your back, sometimes it's, you know, obviously it's great financially, you sure. know, and, and as you grow, your, 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 the finances obviously get bigger and better. There's a, there's something about like, I know how hard you work and how much time you spend out there. I know your family's involved as a, as a sponsor, like my, I love to contribute to kind of be at the scene of the crime. Sure. Like I spend my work days, <laughs> I spend my pre-fishing days sometimes out on a lake trying to get reception watching right. you and Canterbury <laughs> and Sprig and, and, and Bobby and so I'm sitting there, you know, I'm like, you guys are killing me, you know, I'm biting my fingernails sure. off, I'm oh, shutting yeah. the door in my office to keep these people away from FLW Live. <laughs> I mean, it's insanity. Um, the, the, but the, that's got, tell me how, I mean, to me that would be a big deal. Does that make you feel like they have your back as well? Oh yeah, there, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, like, for me, I work full time. Right. I'm a UPS driver. You're you're still you're still hustling here. Right. And with the brown packages still. See, I, I don't, I don't, I'm fortunate enough where I don't use this, you know, to pay my bills. Correct. It's great. I, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to make a little money every year doing it. Right. And I love doing that, opposed to you know delivering boxes to sure. to pay my mortgage. Um. You know, so as far as the sponsor aspect goes, like I've got a great group of sponsors, and I don't have to like settle for for junk. You know what sure. I mean? Like, sure. Like, I mean, long before I had a, a rat boat or whatever, UPS paid my bills. They also paid some entry fee money. So, nice. you know, I don't have to sell myself short to to make a buck. You know gotcha. what I mean? Like, and I I truly feel like that that what I have is is you know the, the best stuff that you can use i mean nice. i mean honestly i i do i used to you know when i when i was buying tungsten weights previously you know that weren't flat out they i would always have to paint them i always have to put a, a right a heat shrink and gorilla glue them in inside there but right. now when i go to fish a tournament yeah i take flat out out of the t- out of the box tie it on and no go, worries. And, and go and go with it. And go. I got more time to sit and grill Gussie about how to tie a drop shot or <laughs> drink <laughs> beer and watch cops. That's kind of our thing to, on tour. So I got more time to do that instead Good of time. instead of painting my weights and all that <laughs> yeah, stuff. Right. And right. it's the same way with 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 everything from the boat to the engine sure. to you know to rod and reels. I mean. So you're 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 saying basically, look, my needs are met. I'm going. I'm working. I'm I'm slinging boxes if I have to. Right. I, you know. Your your wife is is an educated woman. Was she gonna sure. put the smack down on you financially That's right. shortly? Boy, she, you got to win a lot more. Hashtag sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> At it, cut. <laughs> no, um, but so you got a good support group, and 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 one of the you know I was I was scrolling through the notes here, and I was I was thinking to myself, I was gonna say I was gonna put you on the spot a little bit. How speaking of that, how much more do you envision yourself? doing the boxes to where you have to go here or do you want to keep it as this kind of <clears throat> bonus and 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 you know you f- feel like uh man i got you know i kind of got it made i can i can, i got that security my bosses are great at ups and they're they're good to me and i, I get this time off and then this is bonus what have you have you ever <clears throat> i know it's early but have you uh, obviously have you thought about that is there a time progression is there a is there something in the back of your mind saying, "Well, I'll make that decision this year"? I mean, what do you what do you think? No, yeah, it, it it's funny. We just this past week, we've um, Bree and I, we've sat down and we've kind of really put a pen and paper to, to all, all the right. all the future plans. And truthfully, works great. My boss is great. Yeah, you know, the company's great. Um, but I get I I'm I can only do what I do through my one boss. Um, you know, and he's. Like any other corporate corporation, yeah, yes. he's won promotion <laughs> or demotion from no longer being my boss, Correct. and then I get somebody in that may not be as friendly or give me the you know the, the privilege of doing what I do. Correct. Um, and honestly, 
I'll be 34 this, you know, this year um, in August. And, you know, not that that's an old man or anything like that, but it is so, it, it's hard to work two full-time jobs. It is. Um, you literally, and because right. there's people that do just this, and trust me, that's a full-time job. Sure. It's not a lot of, oh no, uh, it's no, work. No. Fishing, I mean, as much as we love it, as much as we enjoy it, sure. it is definitely a full-time job. It's um, work. Between the sponsor stuff, mm -hmm. the, the fishing stuff, the traveling. Um, you know, I left Arkansas at 7.30 Sunday night, and, and I was, I got back to my house uh, Tuesday morning at like 12.30, and I was right. in the UPS truck at 9 a.m. the next day. Right. I mean, that's not exactly easy or fun or enjoyable. <laughs> right. Um, you know, like, and granted, I mean, you know, having a good finish at Beaver w was a bonus. And oh, absolutely. On, um, you know, it's just, you know, I don't, right now my time is so limited that I'm either, you know, I'm either chasing to get home to deliver a brown box or I'm leaving here chasing a little green bass. Yeah. And I don't want the, you know, I don't want the headache of having to always be stressed out going from point A to point B. Um, you know, and I really... I mean, I really feel like that that come the end of the year, you know, I'll have the the, the talk with all my sponsors and yeah. and stuff, and and we'll um, just reassess see, for the next see what year. we can iron out. Sure. Um, you know, but I, I feel like November that something's gonna have to give. Yeah. Um, whether <laughs> it's work or whether it's fishing, you know. Right. Um, and 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 truthfully, that that's the deal. I mean, I uh, you know, I mean, I know which one I want to do. I, but I know which one makes the most sense too. Yeah. So <clears throat> you have to put the fu the fun, the chase, the dream, and then sure. logic. Yet kind of all weigh everything together. Sure. And, and at this point in my career, like, I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot, a lot of stuff that I would like to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know, f fishing wise. Oh, absolutely. Like Angler of the Year, Forest Wood Cup, absolutely. getting back to the Bassmasters Classic. Right. Um, you know, being able to pursue it over on the elite side would be would be nice. Um, but I, I feel like. You know, if I did hang it up too, like I've had a pretty good career. I'm not gonna sell my boat and all everything around here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just right. you know gonna step back from the tour side if that's what I choose to do. Um, you know, but that's gonna be a decision I sit down, down the road, yeah. with with my wife and with sure. my family and stuff. And and uh, you know, it's not an easy decision. I mean, your UPS is a great you know bill sure. paying job. I that's mean, right. Um, a lot of people cherish sure. a job like that. Sure, sure. So. You know, it's it's not going to be made lightly, and mm -hmm. we're, uh, you know, but we'll we'll figure it out. We'll make the best the right call. Right. Do you, you, I mean, you definitely. I mean, I think I think in the back of your mind, you probably know, um, as a competitor and an athlete in this sport, the time sure. is putting time on the water is big. Sure. sure um, sure. and that. You know, something would have to give, whether it be work, and then you'd have to just kind of jump in with all. You know and hit the ground running and uh and then it becomes more you know work and i know some anglers say you know when it, if it becomes unenjoyable they'll step away right is that something that you has entered your mind if you're like if i go all in and, and chase this i'll do it until it's no longer fun now granted competing and working can be part of the of the reward right. behind it the wins and the and the paychecks obviously but have you thought about Man, if this gets too crazy, you know, will they, can I call UPS and get back in the door? I mean, uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, I mean, really, I mean, I I know I would love to, to do it, mm -hmm. you know, to go from one tournament to the next tournament, you know, and so on. Have a week off in between, go find somewhere and fun fish, work through, you know, I, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of, uh, I don't want the right, holes in my game. You know what I'm saying? Sure. As far as from a spinning rod to, mm -hmm. to, to even even a, a, a you know a flipping stick, like I love to skip dots and, and flip dots and all that stuff. And it's just been recently that I that I felt like I've had the right rod in my hand to, to to get the you know to do that to not lose them, not break them off, and so on. You know, so even what I really love to do and what right. I'm kind of known for, I still have a lot to to go and expand and learn on that and. And the only you know, thing that's going to plug those holes is, is investing is, time. Right. Because right. right now I just kind of wing it on the water. Um, you know, and maybe that'll be, maybe that's kind of what, what is my thing. Just kind of, you know, just natural flopping around, you know, and not really having a game plan. But it would be, it, it's just nice to know that, you know, 
that now, like like the last two tournaments, Cumberland and here, right? You know, I've been fortunate enough, knock on wood, I haven't lost any any key fish that you know that's, that's really hurt me or hindered me from getting a check or doing well. I contribute a lot of that to the equipment that I've, I'm using now. Right. You know, but you know, th- there's something else, a, a drop shot. Yeah. I don't know if I got the right drop shot rod or not. Right. And the only way to do to know that is to be able to catch them off of it. Well, it's a little yeah. hard to catch them out here, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so there again, you just kind of tie it on and, you know, I go where Jesse tells me and I throw it out <laughs> there and, you know, hopefully I can catch five of them. Right. You know, and that that's kind of the thing that, you know, I would like to, I would like to be able to work through and, and the, learn there, a lot. Sure. There's days, there's days where, you know, you're, you're punching the clock and you're, and you're moving the boxes and you're probably thinking, I need that drop shot rod and I need to be testing it somewhere and, sure. and trying it out and, and expanding on, you know, going full time. Well, either way, I mean, natural or, I, you know, you see it when you, you know, hey, naturally they're just winging it. Listen. I mean, you got to be happy winging it. There's, there's, there's 141 anglers below you that are winging yeah. it, <laughs> and you got to feel good about that. Ninth in the standing, you got two grass, you call them grass river fisheries coming up. You got lacrosse, and then you head to Potomac river. the Potomac River, and then back to South Carolina Lake Murray for the right. classic. Quickly sum up the next three. What do you feel? You got, you got a chance to flip pitch, kind of do your thing. On the, on the rivers? I, I do. I mean, um, the Potomac River is going to be our last and final event. Um, I'll start there because I've never been to either one, either the, actually, any of the last three that we're going to. Wow. Um, but um, the Potomac River is going to be sometime in June. They're, they're going to have topped out hydro and metal foil. And you'll be able to flip, swim nice. jig, throw a pro frog, stuff that I like to do. Right. Um, you know, and you're catching all large mouth. So that's, nice. that's, Suits me just Build fine. some weight. Even though it's a tidal, you know, place, that's probably gonna throw in a little, a little hitch. You yeah. know, trying to figure that out and stuff. But, you know, it, it seems like that should be a place that a Florida boy should catch him. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> we're going to the Upper Mississippi. I'm leaving in, in just a few days. Yeah. You you um, you're prep packed and ready yeah, for. I'm, I'm I'm ready to go. Um, and that's Wisconsin. It, it's Wisconsin, and it's on the Mississippi River, and it's supposed to be kind of a kind of a, a tedious place to get around on with the sandbars and the wing dams and stuff like right. that. But if all goes according to plan, that you know it, it, we're going there, you know mid May, so the grass may not be as as topped out as full as like it was like in the elite tournaments that have been there in the past few years. Right. Um, but it still should be pretty good. I mean, it's got a it's. You know, you know, as as good as most people can. Yeah. Um, Got a lot of so I, I'm pretty pumped up about that. Murray, cool. I I have never been to Murray. I, I don't really know much about it. Um, you know, so I don't. You know, I still got to catch him the next two to make sure I get to Murray. <laughs> that's but, true. Don't put the cart <laughs> so before the horse. Don't 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 Sorry count about your that. Uh, yeah, the hat. That's but, right. But uh, it's, but it's looking good. You could be in fifty of trying to get in. They're sure. talking bubble already. Sure, sure. So not nine is 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 doing a lot better. Before before we sign off, um, give me an angler on tour that you look up to. Um, not necessarily the biggest winner, you know, the money man or what, but n- who is an angler on tour that you kind of look up to? That's not only you know a cool, comma collective, a good f- angler maybe, but has uh, kind of. Cool, good with the younger bucks, the freshmen, the sophomores, the, you know, the guys that are coming in that doesn't frown and, and look down at everybody. And, and it's almost like a father figure to the younger anglers that are coming into the sport. What, what veteran out there is like, what veteran out there do we need to know, the people that aren't on the tour need to know that there's a, not only a cool guy on camera, but a good guy to you because you know who they are. And maybe there's a bunch. There are. There, there are. There, there are several of them out there that that are, you know, that are just good, you know, good old country boys. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, uh, I mean, for me, it would have to be. I mean, if you're looking for one name, I mean, to me, it would have to be Andy Morgan. Um, you know, I've, I got a lot of respect for Andy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, obviously, he, he. I don't know if he's ever missed the top twenty cut like in the he's last solid. nine years. You know. So from a fishing standpoint, like you know, it, you, you just read his resume. You're, sure, you're, yeah, you're, it's, you're, it's got a lot of ease right. On it. You're you're fine with that. 
But I mean, he he's cool. You know, he he's a good dude. Um, you know, and he's a, he's a great fisherman. Um, I don't really know him all that well. Um, you know, I've had some talks with him with Sprague about him. Him sure. and Sprague, you know, run around together quite a bit. Right. You know, I I really enjoy you know you know talking with Jeff and hanging out with him. Right. So you know, if if he hangs around Andy, then he, you know, it's pretty good. You <laughs> Go know, ahead, pretty pretty good deal. You know. Um, and generally, if you, there was something negative, you obviously right. you yeah, cross yeah, him off yeah, the list, yeah. but. Uh, that, that's who kind of came to my mind too. But sure, just throwing it you know, out there. And, and I like I like him because he's a shallow water guy. He kind of doesn't. He kind of goes against the grain and kind of does his own, right. you know, own little thing and and stuff. And and, and he's a pretty good flipper. And I kind of like to, yeah. you know, I, I kind of like to keep the pretty good flippers pretty yeah. close so that I yeah. can I can learn a little bit, talk to him, sure. stuff like you that. You got a lot more you get in common. Sure, sure. yeah, and, and it's uh, you know, it's fun. Dude, there's a lot of good guys. You know, I'm, I sure. mean. You know, another guy would be Larry Nixon. Yeah. Again, don't personally know him, but you know, you don't, you don't. He hear don't ruffle anything. feathers. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. And I know he talks to a lot of the younger guys, and he, you know, he's kind of, he's kind of that that mentor father figure yeah, kind of I, deal. I, I feel like you know, I feel like if 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 I went out of my comfort zone and actually went up to Larry Nixon and talked to him, like sure. I think it wouldn't wouldn't be a bad thing. Ironically enough, Larry, Larry Nixon, I think, is 10th in points, so you're like, you know, maybe that's a starting conversation for him. There hey, we go. Hey, Larry, uh, I got three points on you headed into lacrosse. So, yeah. Well, listen, um, I learned a lot today. We don't get to talk very much. We got, both got some busy lives, but I learned a lot today. Good luck on the last, next two events. Um, thank you. A lot of people know more about you and what's going on. And I know you kind of just, you know, hang out in your shop and tie <laughs> snail knots all day long and flip giants. But anyway, there's more to Brandon, obviously, than uh, what we think or know, because he's doing it north. And we're about as far south as they put a tournament on <laughs> it. And, yeah, I mean, unless we go to, like, I don't know, Cuba or something. Yeah, really. Everything's north, and he's, he's pulling it off up north. So, Brandon, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. All right, flat out Tungsten Pro, Bass Addiction Gear, Brandon McMillan. I just learned a lot. Hopefully you did too. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, we're out. Sounds good. Thanks, my man. <laughs> Perfect. Is that good? That was good. Let's get a beer. <laughs>